Welcome to the Thursday edition of Video Clips. And first, just a quick announcement. Monday, November 12th, Conversations with Chef Dell. Last one of these for the year. Although, if you're a member, you can go into the um, members-only site, and uh, we have all kinds of these workshops, like about 80 of them now, archived on the website. So there's lots of Chef Dell to listen to on the website. But the topic on Monday is Happy Healthy Holiday, and he's going to talk about Thanksgiving, Christmas, Hanukkah, all the holidays we celebrate in November and December. And um, I've been serving and eating Dell's holiday food for, gosh, it's got to be 15 years now. I can't remember the last time I actually had to cook a holiday meal and um, his food is just amazing by the way if you're here in Columbus we'll deliver the holiday meal and if you are someplace else we will ship to you the holiday meal we did that a whole lot of times uh, for Thanksgiving last year we had a lot of people we shipped them their Thanksgiving meal and all they had to do was warm it up so that's nice and convenient isn't it well let's get into today's uh, news and I have two topics I want to cover and um, one of these, I, I've put out a lot of messages and articles over the years on hormone replacement therapy, um, the inadvisability of it. I'm not any fonder, just for the record, of bioidentical hormones. I don't think we have good data, uh, safety data on bioidentical hormones. And of course, my objection to all of this is we're treating the symptoms, not the cause. But the reason I keep bringing up hormone replacement therapy is I keep running into women who are taking it. And I also regularly talk to women who have been told by their physicians that they should take HRT in order to prevent disease. And time and time again, we have looked at studies, and I've reported them here, that have shown that that's not the case. But a new report from the U.S. Preventative Services Task Force, again, advises against the practice. According to the panel's recommendations, um, the risks associated with HRT outweigh its benefits, and this is exactly what the uh, Preventive Services Task Force started saying back in 2005. So for seven years, we've been getting a consistent message. Um, now, it is true, the panel did say that you can reduce the risk of fractures by taking HRT, but there is no reduced risk of heart disease and an increased risk of breast cancer, stroke, blood clots, gallbladder disease, dementia, and urinary incontinence. Now, I went to the task force's website and looked at their data sheet, and here are the exact statistic, how, statistics. How many women do we help? How many do we hurt? For every 10,000 women who take combined HRT every year, 46 fractures are avoided, but eight women will develop breast cancer, nine will have a stroke, nine may develop serious blood clots in the lungs, 20 may develop gallbladder disease, 12 may develop a serious blood clot in their legs, 22 may develop a dementia, and 872 will have urinary incontinence. So to potentially avoid 46 fractures, we have to induce serious disease in over 1,000, in fact, the number is 1,042 women. Amazing to me that these drugs remain on the market. And what makes this even more egregious, in my opinion, is there's a great risk-free way to avoid broken bones and fractures. Eat a low-fat plant-based diet, exercise, get some sun, and make sure that your GI tract is in good working order. And not only will you end up with a healthy skeleton, but you'll reduce your risk of all these other conditions I've been talking about here, and um, you'll get rid of the reason why most women go to their doctors and ask for these drugs, which is unpleasant symptoms associated with menopause. We know that diet has a great deal to do with hormone levels and hormone fluctuations, so the best thing is for women to practice dietary excellence, exercise, stay lean, and not only will they have an uneventful reproductive life um, in their younger years, but menopause will be a non-event. So again, I'm sure some of you that have been listening for years say, gosh, I already have the HRT message, got it, not taking it, the whole nine yards. But um, just last week, I encountered um, a, a one woman who'd been told by her doctor to take HRT in order to prevent osteoporosis and a couple of others who were taking HRT because menopause was miserable for them does not have to be miserable. You shouldn't even really notice that it's going on. Now, the other thing I wanted to report on is um, vegetarians live longer. Well, I mean, I'm expecting to live a good long time. That's one of the reasons why I do eat an excellent diet. Um, but according to the findings from the Adventist Health Study, which were recently permitted, uh, presented at the American Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics annual meeting, vegetarians live longer than carnivores. In fact, a lot longer than you might imagine. Vegetarian Adventist men live an average of 83.3 uh, years and women 85.7 years. This is nine and a half years longer for men and 6.1 years longer for the average woman. 
Now, what I think is the most appealing though, I mean, living longer is great, um, but you don't want to just live a long time, you want to live better. So um, I, I've always said, why don't we live until we die instead of this very slow degeneration that we tend to do in this country. So you live longer and you live better. Now here are just some of the, uh, the details of the study. Uh, 96,000 Americans and Canadians are um, enrolled in the study. And um, the study found that vegans are an average of 30 pounds lighter than meat eaters. Well, no wonder, the, cat, the food is a lot less calorically dense and higher in fiber. Vegans score better on BMI tests, of course, about five units lower than meat eaters, so we're thinner and healthier. Vegetarians and vegans are less likely to be insulin resistant than meat eaters, not surprising. Vegetarians who eat fish and those who limit animal foods to once a week had intermediate protection against lifestyle related diseases. We know that um, animal foods and foods that we shouldn't eat um, have a dose dependent effect on our health. And those participants who were lean were more likely to exercise, eat plant food, avoid cigarettes, and overweight people. And the researchers basically said there are numerous factors responsible for their good health. And that's what I've been saying for years, that you can't just make one or two changes in the dietary pattern and expect to enjoy excellent health. You have to look at the whole dietary pattern. You really have, I've, I've said it for years, diet is like a combination lock. If it takes four numbers to dial, uh, to dial a combination lock and open it, and you dial only three, you don't get 75% of the results. You have to get that fourth number right. And I think that's why a lot of people come to the Wellness Forum. They come here because they've been trying to get the diet right. They've been trying to take off weight. They've been trying to improve their health. And in spite of their efforts, they're not there yet. They're looking for us to provide that fourth number. So not only are you gonna live longer on a plant-based diet, but you're gonna live better. I already said that. And I'll tell you, now that I'm the age that I am, I'm 56, I'm starting to realize how important this is. I guess I always have realized it, but the people that I know my age, they're taking medications, they're having hysterectomies and procedures, and um, they sure do spend a lot of time on medical care, and I don't want to do that. So I get documentation every day and reminders every day about why I've decided to do, the, to do this, and it just makes me more passionate about telling everybody else. So I'll be back to you next week. As always, feel free to pass this on to anybody who you think would benefit. And uh, one last reminder, a lot of you email me and you want the references for the studies that I quote. Um, all of these uh, messages that, and, and news that I report uh, through video clips are turned into short articles with references and published in the Health Briefs online library, which you can access through our website. If you don't have a passcode to get in, call our office and we'll be happy to help you get set up. So have a great day, a great rest of the week, and I'll talk to you next Tuesday.